हेलो पवाल एंड निदा ओके सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस ओके 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 नो प्रॉब्लम फवाज नो प्रॉब्लम इज फाइन ओके फवाज एंड निदा आर यू गेटिंग माय वॉइस वॉइस प्रॉपर्ली ना एंड ओके 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 सो नाउ आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट we have discussed this uh, the relation between the refractive index wavelength and the speed of the light so in different different medium the speed of light different okay suppose the light is going from water to air so in water the speed of light will be less and in air the speed of light will be more because as compared to the water as compared to the water air is a rarer medium air is a rarer medium okay so we have solved these questions now we'll discuss the uh, laws of refraction laws of refraction so earlier uh, we have studied laws of reflection reflection na so there also we have two laws here also we have two laws so laws of reflection reflection okay so first law you can say first one is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection or another law is incident ray reflected ray normal at the point of incidence line in a same plane okay now we will discuss first law or you can say first statement uh, suppose this is a ray of light here is this ray of light this is the incident ray and this is the normal okay this is the normal and uh, suppose here is medium one okay here is medium one and here is medium two so light is coming from medium one and going to the medium two as the light is changing its medium then what will happen refraction and light will bend towards the normal here light is bending towards the normal it can bend away from the normal also so this is just the case i have taken so first law is this see this this is the incident ray incident ray this is normal and this is the refracted ray this is the refracted ray and here is the point of incidence this is the point of incidence so incident ray normal refract refracted ray at the point of incidence they all are lying in the same plane what is the meaning of the same plane now you can see the screen of your laptop or ipad whatever you have so you can see there all these things i have drawn in a single screen so that is a screen of yours is a plane and the incident ray normal and the refracted ray will lie on the uh, that plane okay and this is valid always another law is the snell's law uh, there we have seen there is a relation between the angle of incidence and angle of reflection what was that relation angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection now here there was a scientist snell and uh, he discovered that there is one relation in refraction also in between the angle of incidence and angle of refraction okay okay uh, so now i will explain you uh, what is snell's law so basically uh, i am taking this is one medium and this is another medium one medium and another medium and light ray is 
this is the incident ray from one medium and it is moving to the another medium okay and this medium have the refractive index mu1 and this medium has the refractive index mu2 okay so this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction and here also uh, you have changed the angle of incidence suppose i2 this time so angle of refraction will also change here is angle of incidence and here is angle of refraction but what the thing you are not changing is the medium between the two here is the medium 1 and medium 2 having the refractive index mu1 and mu2 here also the light is traveling from mu1 to mu2 mu1 to mu2 means from the medium of refractive index mu1 to the mu2 the pair of medium we are not changing we are changing the angle of incidence and accordingly the angle of refraction change mu1 to mu2 is there now uh, there is a relation between the angle of incidence and angle of refraction if you will take sin of angle of incidence sin of i1 divided by sin of r1 this will be equal to this will be equal to sin of i2 divided by sin of r2 this is equal to sin of i3 divided by sin of r3 and if you will take any other uh, means incident angle any other ray for a pair of media then the ratio of sin of angle of incidence and sin of angle of uh, refraction will remain same that will be constant so from here we can conclude and remember uh, this is constant this value is constant for a pair of media okay so snell's law is this this is snell's law so sin of angle of incidence divided by sin of angle of refraction is equal to constant and that for a given pair of media given pair of media means for air and water the sin of angle of sin i by sin r will remain same for water and uh, any other glass medium that will be another constant value and the interesting thing here uh, for example <clears throat> this is the angle of incidence suppose and here is the angle of refraction and light is coming like this and going like this bending of light is taking place now uh, snell's law sin of angle of incidence divided by sin of angle of reflection refraction is equal to mu2 divided by mu1 this value is also equal to mu2 divided by mu1 refractive index of medium 2 divided by the refractive index of medium 1 so mu2 divided by mu1 can be written as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 okay so now we can write this uh, this is this can be written as mu1 into sin i is equal to mu2 into sin of r so basically this form of snell's law we will use to solve the numericals okay but when you write the definition what will be the snell's law sin i by sin r is constant for a given pair of media is snell's law and what is i angle of incidence what is r angle of refraction angle of refraction now this question see this question um, this question okay
very easy question if you know how to apply the snell's law then you can solve it easily okay so here a ray of light is there and the ray of light is coming from air and entering to the medium having the refractive index of root 3 an angle of incidence is 60 degree and this is the normal an angle of refraction we have to find and there is one more angle angle of deviation that also we have to find angle of deviation now uh, how can we find this we have a relation between the angle of incidence and angle of refraction given by given by the snell's law so we will apply snell's law snell's law so what is snell's law take the refractive index i am just telling you how you will apply the snell's law snell's law is this now mu1 into sin of ang angle of incidence is equal to mu2 into sin of angle of refraction this is the snell's law na so how you will apply na first you will write first you you should choose any medium you should uh, choose any medium choose medium so i have chosen air so write first refractive index of that medium that is 1 mu1 and multiply that with sin of angle with normal sin of angle with normal sin of angle with normal is sin 60 here is equal to for another medium write the refractive index that is root 3 and multiply it with sin of angle with normal that is sin r it will become sin r now sin 60 is root 3 upon 2 root 3 divided by 2 and it is root 3 multiplied by sin r so this root 3 and root 3 will be cancel out sin r is equal to you will get 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 can be written as sin of 30 degree sin of 30 degree so what will be the angle of refraction angle of re refraction will be 30 degree so what does it mean what does it mean uh it means this angle na this angle r this is the angle of refraction so this is 30 degree now what is the angle of deviation angle of deviation means if there is no refraction of light if there is no refraction of light uh root 3 where you are saying root 3 uh this one na actually just just wait now uh, tell me where this one this root 3 na or this Hmm? Are you getting the cursor? Only root three. This is given in the question. Basically, this root three is given in the question. Okay. So this root three is given in the question. This root three, na? You are talking about this. This is given in the question. Hmm. now we want to find the angle of deviation so what is the meaning of the angle of deviation so angle of deviation uh, first draw the path of the light ray without the refraction without the bending so the path of the light ray without uh, without the bending will be like this na uh, just a minute if light will go straight because light travel in a straight line okay this should be the path of the light path of ray without refraction okay now uh, tell me can anyone tell me what will be this angle anyone if you have a little idea of maths then you can tell what will be this angle
वेरी गुड वर्टिकली ऑपोजिट एंगल सिक्सटी डिग्री नाइस सिक्सटी डिग्री सो इफ दिस होल एंगल इज सिक्सटी डिग्री ओके इफ दिस होल एंगल इज सिक्सटी डिग्री सो कैन बी फाइंड दिस एंगल कैन बी फाइंड दिस एंगल दिस एंगल विल बी थर्टी डिग्री दिस एंगल इफ दिस होल एंगल इज सिक्सटी डिग्री ना so this angle will be 30 degree and this angle is the angle of deviation the angle between the refracted ray and the actual path and the path of the ray of light without refraction is the angle of deviation so angle of deviation is 30 degree angle of deviation deviation and this angle of deviation is sometimes is represented by this del so this angle is del like this okay this del is basically you will get 30 degree okay now another question uh this question in this question uh a ray of light basically this is whole question given all the things given in this question so angle of incidence is given uh, array of light this is medium 1 medium 2 and me again this is medium 1 light is traveling from one medium to another medium now from this medium uh, uh, again the light is in entering to the medium same medium so refractive index of this medium mu1 and another medium mu2 and again the refractive index will be mu1 because the medium is same we want to find this angle e this is known as the angle of emergence so this angle e we want to find okay so uh, for this this is the first interface this is the first interface and this is the second interface this is the first interface between the medium 1 and medium 2 this is the second interface between the medium 2 and medium 1 now Uh, apply the snell's law apply snell's law now we will apply snell's law okay so for first interface for first interface how we will apply the snell's law light is coming like this and going like this suppose this angle is r angle of refraction suppose you can suppose any other angle also no problem this angle is r and this is normal okay this is the normal now you will apply the snell's law so how you will apply the snell's law so light is coming from this medium to this medium like this so you first you will write the refractive index of this medium that is mu1 and you will multiply sin of angle with normal so sin of angle with normal is sin i sin of angle with normal is sin i that is equal to refractive index of another medium that is mu2 and sin of angle with normal that is sin r so this is your equation not this is your equation so you can find from here mu1 by mu2 is equal to sin r divided by sin i if in if you know the maths then you can tell me this angle see this is the line and this angle is r and this this is normal and this is normal no it is not i this will be r okay see this is normal and this is also normal and remember one more thing this this line and this line are parallel this angle will be r if then this angle will also be r alternate angles these are these are alternate nine class you have i think it's right so now we can apply the snell's law for the second surface second surface so how you will apply this snell's law for the second surface uh, you will write mu2 
इंटू साइन आर म्यू टू इंटू साइन आर इज इक्वल टू म्यू वन इंटू साइन ई म्यू वन इंटू साइन ई फ्रॉम हेयर यू कैन फाइंड म्यू वन बाय म्यू टू वट विल बी द म्यू वन बाय म्यू टू साइन आर डिवाइडेड बाय साइन ई आर डिवाइडेड बाय साइन ई सपोज दिस इज इक्वेशन वन सपोज दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू नाउ सी द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन म्यू वन बाय म्यू टू सी द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ वो दिन equal it means that the right hand side of both the equation should be equal when you will compare equation 1 and 2 you will get sin r divided by sin i sin r divided by sin i is equal to sin r divided by sin e now you can say that uh, either you can take common sin r or uh, i will say sin r and sin r will be cancel out so you will have sin i is equal to uh, sin i is equal to you will have or you can just write this like this you can cross multiply here you will have sin of r multiplied by sin of e is equal to here you will have sin of r multiplied by sin of i sin r cancel out sin e is equal to sin i so angle of emergence equal to angle of incidence i so this is your answer because i is given in the question this is your final answer okay this is your final answer so mean what i want to tell you na uh, here how to apply the snell's law to solve the question how to apply the snell's law to solve the question now just take the screenshots all of you one by one and when completed just write in the box d small d okay ओके ओके जस्ट अ मिनट take the screenshot okay okay nida you also have done took the screenshot okay okay take this hmm okay, this is your question take the screenshot yeah fawaz okay okay no problem no problem. this one na deviation one na this one na okay fine very good if you are means suppose uh, i have scrolled down for example and you have not took the means you didn't took the screenshot then you can ask me to scroll up also okay that's not a problem take now take this screenshot for us okay now take this
scroll down okay now take this screenshot and taking a screenshot is not enough a screenshot should be in your in, in the in the proper order in which i am just telling then this one okay hmm okay 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 so uh these are about the laws of reflection now uh, we will see some of the phenomena uh, taking place due to the refraction of light hmm uh one of them is uh, suppose uh in the swimming pool there is an object at the bottom surface at the bottom so due to the refraction of light na that object will be somewhat up will appear somewhat up okay <clears throat> or you can say laterally displaced so suppose uh, this is the this is a tank here is a tank we are discussing real and apparent depth what is this this is a water tank and there is an object you can say a coin on any other or any other object this is placed at the bottom of this and this water suppose have the refractive index n2 and d is the real depth d is the real depth of this object really this object is here now um, what will happen here is around this there is air so now see what will happen uh, first ray of light from this object suppose like this this is the interface this is the interface so you can see here Uh, as this is a normal incidence so light will pass straight there will be no refraction i have told you na there will be no refraction when there is a normal in incidence even on changing the medium there will be no refraction suppose the second ray from this object is like this here and now at this point at this point uh refraction will takes place because leaving the denser medium and entering to the rarer medium so we will draw the normal and we will see what will happen so normal is there and as the light is moving from denser to rarer it will bend away from the normal it will bend away from the normal so this will be the finally refracted ray and when you will produce this refracted ray in the backward direction like this so image of this object will form here this is the image and this image from the surface is at a distance of d dash means your eyes this is the human eye this eye will see that 
the object will appear here but in actual the object is here so this is d dash d dash is the apparent depth and n1 is the refractive index of uh, air so there is a relation between the real depth and the apparent depth so n2 by n1 is equal to real depth divided by apparent depth that is d by d dash okay so this is the relation real depth and apparent depth okay and we can also prove this we can also prove this how we are getting this okay how we are getting this. what remember uh, you have to remember here that uh, n2 is the refractive index n2 is the refractive index from which uh, refractive index of the medium from which the light is coming so you have to remember few things in this formula n2 is the refractive index of medium from which light is coming coming to observer to observer and n1 is the refractive index of medium to which light is going in which light is going refractive index of medium in which light is going now we can derive this also we can derive this also okay suppose uh, this angle this light is this light ray is going like this so this angle is angle of incidence i this angle is angle of incidence and uh, this angle is angle of refraction r so with the help of maths we can say uh, this angle will also be r okay this is this this line and this line parallel and this is the same line so you can say this angle will be r okay and if this angle is i and this line and this line are parallel so you can say this angle will also be i hmm this angle will also be i suppose uh, this distance is x this distance is small x let's suppose and suppose this is o point this is a point and here is the point that is b point and this is i so now we will use the similarity of uh, we will use the trigonometry and with the help of trigonometry we can prove that but here there is one assumption that rays from the object rays from the object are paraxial are paraxial paraxial means these rays are just parallel rays so due to that due to that angle i angle r are very small are very is small 
this is the assumption you can take now c triangle oab in triangle oab oab is a right angle triangle okay so triangle oab tan i we can calculate calculate tan i so uh, tan i mm. okay so we can calculate tan i so tan i will be uh, tan of this angle will be perpendicular divided by base so perpendicular distance is x and this distance is d so x by d paraxial means the these rays na these rays are very close means this ray this ray and this ray are just parallel appearing to parallel if these rays will be parallel the angle of incidence and angle of refraction will become very very small so it will be tan i tan i will be perpendicular by base and this is base is d ao is d na so you can write x y d x y d but we know that uh, angle of incidence and angle of refraction are very very small so you can write uh, okay leave that now see this triangle in triangle iab triangle iab tan of r tan of r will be given by x divided by ai and ai is given by d dash x y d dash uh, now apply the snell's law apply the snell's law at this interface snell's law so how you will apply the snell's law refractive index of this medium that is n2 into sin of angle of sin of angle with normal so n2 into sin i n2 into sin i is equal to another medium refractive index n1 into sin r n1 into sin r remember uh, one thing i have just told uh angle i and angle r are very small so if these angles are very small then sin of angle of incidence can be approximately equal to i and this can be written as tan i and cos of angle of refraction can be written as r and this can be written as tan r so what i want to say that sin i can be written as tan i and sin r can be written as tan r so n2 into sin i sin i you you can write tan i and n1 sin r you can write tan r now n2 by n1 is equal to tan r by tan i now n2 by n1 what is tan r tan of r is x upon d dash x upon d dash and this will be x upon d so finally you will get n2 by n1 you will get d by d dash and what is this d d is the real depth of object divided d dash is the apparent depth apparent depth so remember this so with the help of as we are just what we are studying we are studying the geometrical optics so geometry will be used so i have used the geometry to prove this
ओके टेक द स्क्रीन शॉट बोथ ऑफ यू बट रिमेम्बर दिस एन टू वट इज एन टू एंड वट इज एन वन ओके हम्म टेक दिस स्क्रीनशॉट Okay. Now finally, take this screenshot. Now, formula you should know to solve the numerical. And I will take one numerical that will be very good numerical. Okay. And we will apply this formula there only. Okay. We will apply this formula there only. What is n two? N two is the refractive index. N two is the refractive index of the medium from which the light is coming towards the observer. okay so our question is this uh this is the water having the refractive index 4 by 3 and here is the air refractive index 1 and here is a bird this is a bird and this bird and this is the interface separating the water and the air so from this surface this bird is at a height of 36 cm and from this surface there is a fish and this fish is at a depth of 24 cm okay uh, they are asking find depth of fish seen by bird first question depth of fish seen by bird so who is the observer here bird is the is the observer it is answer number 1 so we have to find the depth of the fish seen by the bird so bird is the observer bird is the observer here so n2 here what will be n2 if observer is here so light is going from here to the observer so n2 will be 4 by 3 here and what is n1 n1 is 1 now you can apply n2 by n1 d by d dash what is n2 4 by 3 n1 is 1 what is real depth of the fish 24 we will measure the depth from the surface only so real depth of the fish is 24 cm and apparent depth we can calculate so what we will get the apparent that uh, depth Four six the twelve, so it will d dash will become eighteen centimeter. D dash will be eighteen centimeter. So fish, this fish na uh, will be somewhere here. At a distance of eighteen centimeter from the surface, it will appear. The fish will appear here. In actual, the fish is here, but to this world the fish will appear here so at a distance of 18 cm d dash now can anyone tell me what will be the depth of the fish seen by the world answer is in front of you Hmm. So what? See, bird is here, na? 
वर्ड इज हेयर ट्वेंटी फोर बेटा सी जस्ट जस्ट लिसन दिस वर्ड इज हेयर दिस वर्ड इज हेयर ना सो नाउ टू दिस वर्ड द फिश इज अपियरिंग हेयर सो बेसिकली थर्टी सिक्स प्लस एटीन टोटल डिस्टेंस इज दिस ना थर्टी सिक्स प्लस एटीन फिफ्टी फोर सेंटीमीटर गॉट इट ना निधा हाउ यू विल कैलकुलेट दिस इज द पोजिशन दिस इज द पोजिशन ऑफ द फेस विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस सरफेस बट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द बर्ड विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द बर्ड एस सीन बॉय द बर्ड द डेप्थ विल बी थर्टी सिक्स प्लस एटीन सेंटीमीटर so you can say depth of fish seen by bird is equal to this 36 bird is at 36 cm plus 18 cm 36 plus 18 36 plus 18 that will be equal to 54 i think eh? 54 सेंटीमीटर ओके डू वन थिंग टेक योर पेन एंड पेपर पेन एंड कॉपी एंड ट्राई टू सॉल्व दी क्वेश्चन नंबर सेकेंड एंड टेल मी द आंसर ट्राई टू सॉल्व दी क्वेश्चन नंबर सेकेंड यू हैव टू अप्लाई दिस फॉर्मूला आई एम राइटिंग द फॉर्मूला हेयर एन टू बाई एन वन इज इक्वल टू डी बाई डी डैश वॉट इज एन टू एन एन वन डी एन डी डैश यू नो टेक द टाइम ऑफ थ्री मिनट एंड ट्राई टू सॉल्व दिस
okay so this question we have to solve now this is the actual position of the bird and this is the actual position of the <clears throat> this is the actual position of the fish now they are asking what is the height of the bird seen by the fish height of the bird seen by the fish now who is the observer fish is the observer fish is the observer now if fish is the observer so means the light will come from air to fish air to water to what the observer na light comes so n2 will be this time one n2 this time one and n1 this time 4 by 3 now apply n2 by n1 n2 by n1 is equal to real depth of the fish real real depth of the bird Uh, real height of the real height of the bird if of the surface d by d dash and apparent height of of the bird okay n2 is 1 and this is 4 by 3 and what is the real height of the bird if of the surface 36 cm and d dash we have to find so we can find it it will be 3 by 4 is equal to 36 divided by d dash so 3 One's a three, three two's a six. So d dash will be forty eight centimeter. What is the meaning of d dash forty eight centimeter? D dash forty eight centimeter means this bird will appear at a height of forty eight centimeter. This bird will appear at a height of forty eight centimeter to the fish. so this will be the bird apparent position of the bird apparent position of bird and what is this distance this distance is basically 48 cm from the surface now can you tell me what is the height of this bird as seen by the fish can anyone tell me the answer nida and fawaz very easy this time what i am asking listen the height observed by the fish of the bird the height of the bird observed by the fish this time beta for this fish na actually you are doing the mistake actually you are adding This twenty four into thirty six. No, you have to add this twenty four plus forty eight. This is the game here. Seventy two, right? Why? Because na this is the actual this thirty six centimeter na this this thirty six centimeter here. This is the actual position. But for the fish, for the fish due to the refraction, the bird is here. So the fish will observe the bird here at this position, and what is this position 48 plus 24 with respect to fish okay so height of bird seen by fish height of bird seen by fish is equal to 24 plus 48 24 plus 48 that will be 72 cm
ओके स्क्रीन शॉट टेक द स्क्रीन शॉट फोर्टी एट हाँ ओके जस्ट अमेट जस्ट अमेट एक्चुअली सी दिस फोर्टी एट हा फोर्टी एट इज द एपरेंट पोजिशन फोर्टी एट एक्चुअल पोजिशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज दिस बट वेन यू विल सी और वेन दिस फिश विल सी फ्रॉम द वॉटर सो दिस फिश विल सी फ्रॉम द वॉटर टू द वर्ल्ड so this word will appear here at a height of 48 cm at a height of 48 cm so 48 cm is the apparent position of the fish uh, apparent position of the bird got it nida okay okay fine no problem okay take the screenshot how ओके 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 now we will see a uh, shift through the glass slab so this is the glass slab of thickness t and here is the object place this is this is the object place okay and uh, you are watching this object through this glass slab from here so there will be the shift in the object and how that shift will take place as this is a object so object is a source of light so what will happen uh, suppose first ray of light from this object is like this and here is air and here is also air and this is the glass slab uh, having the refractive index of mu so from this object this is the incident ray as this ray is passing from air to this medium glass medium so refraction will take place as light is going from rarer to denser medium it will bend towards the normal it will bend towards the normal like this it will bend towards the normal and uh, now uh, this is the reflected ray refracted ray now from this medium glass again the light will go to the air so again the refraction will takes place so this is the normal but this time the light is going from 
denser to rarer so it will bends away from the normal it will bend away from the normal okay so it will bend away from the normal so when you will produce this light ray finally so somewhere here you will get the image of this object so where will be the image this will be the image of the object you will get and this is known as the shift shift s to calculate this shift there is a formula that is s is equal to thickness of the slab 1 minus 1 upon refractive index of the slab and this formula is valid when on both side there is air if on both side there is another medium suppose if on both side there is another medium suppose if on both side of slab there is another medium then you can write shift will be t multiplied by 1 minus refractive index of that medium divided by refractive index of the slab okay and few more points i want to write if shift if the value of the shift is positive then you will say, say the shift is in the direction of incident ray shift is in the direction of incidence ray incident ray if shift is negative shift is in the opposite direction of incident ray so both these formula you should know now question uh, Hmm. so <clears throat> this is the first question this is a glass slab of thickness 15 cm okay this is a glass slab of thickness 15 cm and we have to find the shift what is the meaning of the shift this object will appear uh, to some uh, another position that is known as the shift 
so we want to find the value of the shift so now both side of the glass slab this is the this is the glass slab there is air so we will apply this formula shift is equal to thickness multiplied by 1 minus 1 by refractive index of the glass slab what is the thickness 15 cm 1 minus 1 upon 1.5 it will be 1.5 uh, here will be 15 multiplied by 0.5 divided by 1.5 when you will solve it you will get 5 cm plus 5 cm now shift is positive if shift is positive so it will be in the direction of the incident ray somewhere here the object will appear of 5 cm shift will take place in the direction of the incident ray because here is the object the object will give light in this direction okay another question this is the glass slab and on both side there is there is no air there is some other medium of refractive index and here is the object you have to tell the direction of the shift as well as the what is the shift okay what is the shift and in which direction the shift will takes place in the direction of the light or in the opposite direction of the light okay and you have to apply this formula s is equal to thickness multiplied by 1 minus refractive index of the medium surrounding medium divided by the refractive index of the glass slab okay so shift will become 15 thickness is 15 1 minus refractive index of the medium surrounding medium is 2 and this is 1.5 so when you will solve it you will get minus 5 cm so minus 5 cm means the object will shift in the opposite direction of the incident ray this will be the direction of the incident ray from the object so the object will be shifted in the opposite direction because shift is negative what is this this is a glass slab okay write down this is the object this is the image Okay. Take this. if the surrounding medium is air then this formula you will use if the surrounding medium is other than air then you will use this formula
okay so uh, have anyone heard about the heard about the critical angle and the total internal refraction tir total and internal reflection okay so that we will discuss now total internal reflection so see what is total internal reflection uh this is a denser medium this is a rarer medium and suppose the light ray is going from denser to rarer medium and this is now first angle of incidence is i1 and refraction taking place angle of refraction is r1 again when you have increased the angle of incidence angle of refraction will also increase hmm? and here when you have again increased the angle of incidence in this case what is what happened in this case what happened the in the refracted ray suffer the means angle of refraction becomes 90 degree and that angle of incidence is known as the critical angle so here angle of incidence is equal to critical angle c is the critical angle what is happening first the angle of incidence is i1 and angle of refraction is r1 okay, now you have increased the angle of incidence now suppose this is angle 30 degree and this is 60 degree and again you have increased suppose 65 degree and for that particular angle there is a uh, you can say uh, the light ray will move along the surface means the angle of refraction will become the 90 degree and that angle is known as the critical angle what is the critical angle the angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction becomes 90 degree and the light ray moves along the surface okay here the medium is same light is moving from denser medium to rarer medium if this angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle then what will happen if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle suppose this is the angle of incidence and this angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle and the light is moving from denser to rarer medium then in this case the total internal reflection will take place total internal reflection will takes place okay tir total internal reflection will takes place here angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection because here total internal refraction is taking place without mirror without mirror the reflection is taking place see without mirror there is no mirror then also the reflection is taking place now what are the condition for total internal tir means total internal reflection light should move from denser to rarer medium angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle now we will calculate what is the critical angle so suppose uh, the light is moving from denser to rarer medium so what, what will be the critical angle means suppose this angle of incidence is equal to critical angle so in this case the light will move along the surface and angle of refraction becomes 90 degree now apply the snell's law apply apply snell's law what law is snell's law so how you will apply snell's law mu2 into sin i mu2 into sin i is equal to mu1 into sin 90 so mu2 into sin what is i i is equal to angle of uh, critical angle sin c is equal to mu1 into 1 so sin of critical angle is equal to mu1 divided by mu2 what is mu1 refractive index 
of rarer medium mu1 is the refractive index of rarer medium and what is mu2 refractive index of denser medium if rarer medium is air if rarer medium is air then refractive index of rarer will become 1 and sin c will become 1 by mu sin c will become 1 by mu okay understood Okay, take the screenshots. Okay, uh, on this, uh, we will solve one numerical. See this numerical. They are asking the critical angle for air refractive index 1 and the glass refractive index 1.5 interface. So, what is the critical angle? Sin C is equal to refractive index of rarer medium divided by sine of critical angle is equal to refractive index of rarer medium divided by refractive index of denser so sine of c refractive index of rarer is 1 here air is a rarer medium glass will be the denser medium so 1.5 so it will become 2 by 3 so c you will get sine inverse 2 by 3 and this value is approximately equal to 42 degree in examination you can just write this only that will be correct okay take the screenshot of this also and uh, after this uh, now we will meet in the next class all of you and uh, don't miss the classes Okay, Fawaz and Nida. Take the screenshots and if you guys have any kind of doubt, you can ask me. And don't skip the classes. This okay. Uh, this question, na, no? Fawaz, you are saying this question. Okay. Uh, 
they are ask they are asking find critical angle for air for air and glass interface critical angle for air and glass interface so what formula i have told you for the critical angle sin of crit c is the critical angle sin of critical angle is equal to refractive index of rarer medium divided by refractive index of denser medium now when you will put this sin of critical angle because we want to find the critical angle sin of critical angle is equal to refractive index of rarer medium divided by the refractive index of denser medium so sin of c what is the refractive index of rarer medium rarer air is the rarer medium and glass is the denser medium so refractive index of rarer medium is given mu is equal to 1 so you will put 1 here after that you will put 1.5 here hmm 1.5 can be written as 3 by 2 and 1 upon 3 by 2 can be written as 2 by 3 okay you have to write like this this is 1 divided by 1.5 is 3 by 2 na so you can write it as 2 by 3 so sin c is equal to 2 by 3 what you will get sin of critical angle is equal to 2 by 3 so critical angle if you want to find so you can write it as write it as sin of inverse 2 by 3 okay that is equal to 42 degree so this is your answer so was now okay now it's okay for us any other doubt nida uh, this is the value this is the value I means 40 degree how 42 degree how is just like i will say like i i, I will say sin of uh, sin inverse of uh, one sin inverse of one is equal to 90 degree so how means this is the value means this is a specific value i know this value but there is no need to uh, learn this value by you okay nida so we will now meet in the next class uh, after uh, so don't miss the classes only i can say that okay fine fine fawaz and nida okay 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 fine